Good evening. I'm Sister Mary Madeleine of the Queenship of Mary community, and I'm honored to have been asked to share my experience of God's transforming grace following my conversion or reversion, as I am a cradle Catholic who had turned away from God. God never abandons us. It is we who abandon him. My childhood and teen years, including my early adulthood, were difficult and painful. I chose to rebel and so drifted away from my faith as I searched for love and acceptance in all the wrong places. In the process, I, I lost all sense of a healthy self-love falling into sin. I knew that my mother and others were praying for me, but it made no impression on me. In my estimation, they were simply wasting their time. Today, though, I am grateful, for I now know the power of intercessory prayer. Praise Jesus that in those turbulent and dark years, Jesus never took his eyes off of me. He who is divine mercy protected me from totally destroying myself by sending me many angels, as I like to call them. Angel means messenger. I certainly did not merit these very good and loving people, uh, including my, own, my late husband. All were instruments of God's divine mercy. I must also thank God for my garden angel, as I'm sure he was working overtime during those years. Now, let me share a little of my life just before my conversion. Uh, in 1980, I was blessed to have spent the last three weeks of my father's life at his bedside. The Lord used my father's difficult but short battle with cancer and subsequent death to plant a major seed of conversion in my heart. I'll never forget the words that he said to me. He looked at me and said, forgive me for all the times that I was not there for you. I know that I've, I know that I've always loved you very much. You may not have be as fortunate as I am. Of course, when he was saying that, I thought, wow, the brain tumor is really affecting him. He said it was as if God had placed a TV in front of him. And he, sa and he said, my whole life rolled before my eyes, giving me the opportunity to thank, to, to, to ask him uh, forgiveness, to make amends with him and with you and with all of my loved ones. You may not be given that uh, opportunity. You may die suddenly. So do think seriously of getting your life right with God now while you can. Those words echoed in my heart for 12 years before I finally acted on them. Praise be to God for his infinite mercy and love that pierced through the tiny cracks that still remained opened in my stony heart. Slowly and steadily he shone his light into the dark corners of my heart, revealing my desperate, desperate need of repentance. In 1989, for about three years, I had Jehovah Witnesses coming to my door, and this made me delve into my Bible that, that was just collecting dust. I asked the Holy Spirit to show me truth, and so the Holy Spirit enlightened me when I read John's Gospel, which then prepared me to accept a friend's invitation to attend a Life in the Spirit seminar. She had asked me twice a year for three years, and I was kept turning her down. By the grace of God, I stuck it out, and I was, as I was very skeptical about the hands in the air and the praying in tongues, I only wanted to fall deeply in love with Jesus. Soon after that Life in Spirit seminar, I woke up in the middle of the night, seeing a bright light coming from the corner of our bedroom. It was coming from an image of a sacred heart of Jesus uh, that I had stuck in the corner of my, the mirror on my bureau. There was no street lights behind uh, our bedroom, uh, so there was nothing to reflect light. So when I turned around to go back to the bed and wake up my husband, I turned and the light had disappeared. This was to me an answer to prayer and it inflamed my heart toward Jesus. However, I kept that to myself for a long time because I was afraid of being laughed at and thought that I was just imagining things. So I registered for the very next Life in Spirit se seminar saying, I am now open. I'm ready to accept all the gifts, any gifts, Lord, just I want it all. So the next I, I got involved, I also got involved in the small group, as a small group leader in all the, the subsequent uh, Life in the Spirit, Spirit seminars. Because of, of my weakness, which is impatience, I began to ask God, why are you not giving me this gift of tongues? And God answered me by, when, that, when I went to uh, 1 Corinthians, I think chapter 14, and these verses just jumped out at me. It said, um, make, make love your aim and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that of prophecy. For no one who speaks in a tongue speaks 
not he doesn't speak uh, to men, but he's speaking to God. So no one understands him, and he's just, just uttering mysteries of the Spirit. And further in verse 23, I think it was, it said, if the whole church assembles and all speak in tongues, and outsiders and unbelievers, unbelievers come in, will they not think that you're mad? Well, this is exactly what had happened to me. So I realized that the gift of tongues was the least of the, t the gifts, and that it was mainly to, edif to be self-edified and not to edify others. And so... I told the Lord that I was pleased with whatever he would give me, and so I let it all go. As soon as I consciously and willingly opened my heart to Jesus, inviting Jesus into my life, I was just inundated with his amazing transforming grace. The more I begged for his mercy and his forgiveness, the more that he showered me with grace to change my ways as, and, and to heal, and he healed my heart. Spending time before the Blessed Sacrament in adoration and participating in Holy Mass as often as I could provided the graces I needed to amend my ways and to please God. I was experiencing deep sorrow for my past sins and falling more and more in love with Jesus. Unbeknownst to me though, he was in just three years time, I would be facing some major trials in my life and Jesus was just simply preparing me for this. You see, before my encounter with Jesus in 1992, my late husband was my strength, my all. I had made him my savior, believing that I could not live without him. And this was not good. So Jesus, in his mercy, called me out of the darkness into his marvelous light. And he did this just in time to enable me to deal with what was ahead without my falling apart in the midst of it all. True contrition is an openness to the Holy Spirit granted Grant, uh, through the graces and necess necessary not only to withstand these trials but also um, it, it was a source for me to to be a strength for my husband in his last days. God knew exactly when I would need this gift of tongues to edify, my, uh, edify me. It was in October 1995 after my, uh, my husband had had major surgery the doctor confirmed that it was a, a very aggressive terminal cancer. Stunned and numb, I went home that night and I could not sleep, so I went to my little prayer corner to pray and to plead with God not to take him from me, as I was terrified of raising our two sons, who were eight years old and 13 years old, on my own, especially my oldest, who had a very strong will. Exhausted, I began saying, come Holy Spirit, come. and and pray in and through me, for I don't know how to pray anymore. And all of a sudden, I found myself praying in words and sounds that I didn't understand. And I, but I felt a great peace come over me, along with tears that were comforting and healing. I prayed in this new tongue for about an hour before going back to bed, falling asleep, resting in God's arms. I had, God had strengthened me for the trial of coming. Of course, being no, nowhere near perfect, and because of my free will, I must admit that after my husband's death, I fell into the old sin of self-pity self a number of times as I struggled to, in raising our two, our two sons, who were now 16 and 11 when he died. Also, I had to journey with my mother through her own battle and subsequent death to cancer in the year 2000. Although this was not easy, God's grace, I, I, God's grace never left me. I was, um, I never gave up my faith. I kept begging for forgiveness and for mercy every step of the way. My way of dealing with it all was to serve God through Holy Mass, hour of adoration once a week and getting very involved in my parish, forgetting the proper balance, to properly balance myself and to guard against taking on too much. Balance comes through daily prayer and especially through listening, something that I still struggle with as I tend to do most of the talking during prayer. Although this is okay when interceding, we must balance it with listening to God. Delving into God's word daily helped me to know Jesus. For me, St. John's Gospel and his letters were the, a good place to start. We must remember not to neglect or our duty of the moment, because this is what pleases God. God does not want quantity, but he wants quality. So obedience according to our state in life is very, very important. 
I say this because after my conversion in 92, I was a little unbalanced uh, with my zeal. I wanted all of my loved ones to turn their lives over to Jesus, forgetting that he was the Savior and not me. And so I did more damage than good. What I found most helpful, though, was giving God permission to be Lord in every area of my life, as well as making a 33-day consecration to Jesus through Mary, which is a sure and quick way to draw closer to Jesus. Mary's role is, is uh, to point us to her divine Son while conforming us more and more to his image. We cannot love Mary more than Jesus loves her. Pondering the mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary always uh, allows uh, Mary to, to walk uh, through Jesus' life, through his passion, through his death, and his resurrection. Let me share some scriptures and words of wisdom from different saints that helped me along the way. John, in John uh, chapter 1, verses 16, 17, and for your fullness, uh, no, sorry, uh, and for your fullness, have we all received grace, grace upon grace. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And Colossians 1 verse 19 said, In Christ affirms St. Paul, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. Remember how the angel Gabriel addressed Mary as full of grace. This meant that the fullness of God was, uh, was uh, dwelling in her fully. Now these words Jesus said to St. Faustina really helped me. She sa uh, Jesus said to her, I desire the confidence of my people. Let not even the weak and the very sinful fear to approach me, even if their, sin, if their sins be as numerous as all the sands of the earth. All will be forgiven in the fathomless pit of my mercy. The graces of my mercy are drawn by means of one vessel only, that is trust. The more a soul trusts, the more it will receive. And then again in Father Francis Fernandez in Conversations with God, I love that little book, it said, it, it is such a mystery why the Lord sometimes lets us suffer illness, pain, or contradictions, which are especially intense and serious. When this happens, we are tempted to lose heart because it is difficult to accept the will of God. However, we must fix our eyes on Jesus and beg him for the graces to embrace his will without putting any limit or condition, whatever, on our acceptance of it and identify ourselves with the love of God by means of persevering prayer. Mother Angelica's words, the key to suffering of any kind, even unjust suffering, is to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and God will work wonders in our souls. Let us not forget uh, Matthew's Gospel in chapter 6 where we were told, Do not worry. Can any of you, by worrying, add a single moment to your lifespan? And again in Matthew 19, verse 26, we know that for human beings this is impossible. But in, with, and through Jesus, all things are possible. Transformation is ongoing through the power of the sacrament of confession and the Holy Eucharist right up to the day when we meet Jesus face to face. The baptism of the Holy Spirit stirs up all the graces that we've already received in our infant baptism and in the sacrament of confirmation. God has certainly done an impossible, the impossible, in my life. He wants to do the same in each of our lives. I was dead in my transgressions and he brought me back to life because he was because he has forgiven me much, it is my desire to love much by giving him an undivided heart. We are called to pray with expectant faith. In 2007, while on a silent retreat, I heard Jesus calling me to himself when reading the prophet Hosea, Hosea I never can pronounce that right, Hosea, in chapter 2, uh, I read, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. And in that day, she says, the Lord, you will call me my husband. Also in Psalm 32, 8, I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eyes upon you. Now these words were not indicating religious life for me, only a deeper union with him. 
religious life was not on my radar. I was 50, 56 years old. However, God, being a God of surprises and a God of impossible possibilities, called me to religious life the very next year at the age of 57. That is a story all to itself. We need to be attuned to the Holy Spirit in prayer and develop a habit of seeking His counsel, guidance, and direction. If our inspirations seem too difficult to carry out, we must let God know and beg for His grace and strength to carry it out. The Holy Spirit speaks to our own spirit, giving us confidence and conviction, and our faith demands our trust in God as our loving Father so that we can be filled with his supernatural peace and love, knowing that God, through Jesus, has won the victory for us, that he is in control and has the last word. Daily reading God's word provides strength, direction, courage, as well as pondering and meditating on his passion, his death, resurrection, through the mysteries of the rosary and the stations of the cross. We struggle to love God as God intends due to the original sin, God, who is love, created us with a free will because true love is free. God wants us to freely choose to love him, so he allows us to reject him and to take things in our own hands as we try to be in control. God also asks us to love others unconditionally as he loves us. However, most of us, and I'm speaking for myself here, have a hard time to love and forgive those who have harmed us in any way. We, are off, we often remain in our misery because of unforgiveness, and this blocks the graces that God wants to shower upon us. This is why Jesus gave us the Our Father, asking us to forgive as he forgives. I gave the Lord my full yes, surrendering my whole life to him and giving him permission to use this broken vessel in whatever manner he chooses for the greater glory of his kingdom. I belong completely to him, and I am ready to follow him wherever he calls me. I can honestly claim, claim with St. John, St. Paul's words in 1 Corinthians uh, as my own, but by the grace of God am I what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. Every single step that any soul takes towards God is as a result of grace. My heart is filled with gratitude, awe, and wonder at the immensity of this call in my life. And I often pray, how can this be, O Lord, that at my age and with my vile past and sin, sin, sinfulness, you should choose me to work in your vineyard through such a high call? And he always tells me, it's all grace and mercy. And this is available to each and every one of us just for the asking. Jesus is always waiting so patiently, knocking at the door of our hearts until we open it and invite him in. Do you know that enrolling in the confraternity of the Most Holy Rosary multiplies every rosary you pray? You are joined by a multitude of brothers and sisters around the world, and this brings down torrents of graces upon all of humanity. Praying the rosary on your own obtains graces much like a faucet that just drips. Praying the rosary in a group is like a babbling brook of graces coming down a hill. And praying the rosary as a member of the, conf of the rosary confraternity brings down an outpouring of graces much like Niagara Falls. I will leave you with these words from St. Paul in Philippians and in Corinthians. Let us forget what lies ahead and strain forward to what lies uh, I mean, let's forget what lies behind and strain forward for what lies ahead, pressing on toward the prize which we are called to in this life, to, uh, to in the life above. For no one has seen, nor heard, nor the heart, uh, nor the heart of man conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. May the most holy, most sacred, most adorable, most mysterious and unutterable name of God be always praised, blessed, loved, adored, and glorified in heaven, on earth, and under the earth by all the creatures of God and by the sacred heart of our Lord Jesus Christ in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Amen. Thank you for listening to me. And I have a handout as well. Um, it's, it's, uh, you can email uh, Josephine and she'll gladly send you uh, the, these links that I've got there. So thank you and God bless you.